So measles is a highly contagious uh, viral illness. And the reason it's so worrisome is that it actually is not a benign disease uh, when you have it, especially as a child. So this is actually the quintessential airborne virus. So this virus is spread through very tiny aerosol droplets as well as contact and other things. And this virus is really, really uh, stable in the environment. So if you go into a room where a patient who had measles had been, even a few hours later, you can actually get measles if you're susceptible to catching it. So very, very transmissible and the typical kind of way that many viruses are transmitted. There, there is a classic um, acronym that's used, it's the three C's and a K. And the three C's are cough, conjunctivitis, which is a redness in the eyes, and coryza, or a runny nose. And the K actually stands for something called a coplic spot, which is spelled K-O-P-L-I-K. And when you examine the mouth of someone with measles, they have these white dots on the inside of their cheek, on the inside what we call the buccal mucosa. And those are pathognomonic. In other words, if you see those in a patient who has cough, coryza, conjunctivitis, with or without a rash, then you're dealing with measles. Well, measles is serious because it has a lot of complications associated with it. And the two most common ones we see are pneumonia and encephalitis, which is an inflammation of the brain. Uh, and the encephalitis in particular can be quite deadly and it will leave uh, what we call sequelae or follow-up problems with brain damage which can result in significant long-term effects over the life of the person if they survive. The pneumonia is particularly dangerous as well and, and patients sometimes need to be cared for in a hospital and may even need to be ventilated. So we have a very effective prevention against measles, which is the vaccine. And in Canada, uh, typically we've seen vaccine rates above 90% and oftentimes above 95%. When you have that many people vaccinated, even incidental cases of measles that might arise from someone, say, returning or traveling from a country where their vaccination rates are lower, it never sort of develops into an outbreak because we have something that we refer to as herd immunity. Everybody has been vaccinated so they can't can't get it and they can't transmit it. What's been happening recently is that measles has infiltrated itself into populations of individuals who are not vaccinated. And there are various communities that exist in Canada, the United States and around the globe where vaccination of all types is eschewed. And in that scenario, if measles gets into that group, there's a great chance for it to transmit quite effectively because everyone in that group is not vaccinated. So the measles vaccine is very effective. Uh, it's considered to be about 95% protective once you receive at least two doses. And that offers significant lifelong protection uh, and upwards of greater than 95%. And this is a very effective vaccine. It's never changed from its introduction as a live virus vaccine in the 60s. Um, it is not associated with any substantial complications we are aware of. And that has been studied very intensively both in the scientific community as well as the legal community. Certainly an exposure to a case of known measles requires um, some notification, their personal physician and of course public health. If they contact their personal physician or they're seen perhaps in an emergency department or some other medical setting, public health has to be notified. This is considered a notifiable disease. And even if it's just a concern about exposure, public health will follow up and do contact tracing of what the suspected case is and others who may have been in contact with them. Treatment for measles is principally what we call supportive care. Um, so many people will get measles and will recover, uh, but some will require hospital care and they may need to have complications that arise um, uh, addressed. 
Um, there is no treatment. Uh, so there has been some suggestion by people that if you use uh, vitamin A that it can help. But I, I would not want to mislead people into thinking that's a treatment. It's just related to the fact that we know that measles mortality historically was very high in malnourished populations and a lot of it was thought to be related to uh, vitamin deficiencies like a vitamin A deficiency. But there really is no treatment. We don't have antiviral drugs and it's really required uh, basically to support someone during the course of their illness until they recover and remembering that a substantial number of people even with supportive care will have long-term sequelae and complications and may die. Well, measles is the classic illness for which when your mother told you this, it's true. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure.